In this video, I'm gonna talk about priming your cheap plastic miniatures. Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This episode, I'm gonna continue on my miniature basic series and I'm gonna talk about priming your minis. And this is a very important step to consider and it's also a somewhat controversial step to talk about with a lot of different options, a lot of different ideologies, and a lot of different emotional responses, which I'm sure I will see in the comments section. So keep in mind, this topic has a lot of different options, and I'm just gonna share with you the way I do it, which I think is a great way for beginners to also do it. Keep in mind that because this series is dedicated to beginners, I'm not gonna be talking about or showing airbrushing in this process because I don't think that's something to even consider as a beginner and also I don't I don't even do it. I don't have an airbrush yet. Not, not yet, I will eventually, I'll, I'll get around to it. So WizKids pre-primed miniatures and Reaper Bones. Both of these are sold as ready to paint out of the package. And I think that for both of them, this is only a half truth. At the very, very least, you have to perform one very important step before applying paint to either of these miniatures, and that is washing them. Both of these, but especially the Reaper Bones, you want to wash in soapy water. Get a little bit of water with some dish soap and scrub them a bit with a toothbrush, dip them in some clean water to rinse and make sure they are nice and clean. This is important because in the mold making process, often a mold release agent is used to allow the figure to come out of the two part mold. And sometimes this release agent can still be present on your mini. And because it's a, essentially an anti-stick uh, liquid or oil, it'll screw up your paint and you can have a bonding issue. I can speak from experience that forgetting to perform this step can bite you in the butt later when after you have some paint on your mini, you start rubbing it a little bit and it just starts coming off because it doesn't bond. So wash your minis before moving forward. And it's really important, extremely important that you let them thoroughly dry before moving on to paint or primer. Now let's talk about primer. What is it and why do you need to do it? And I'm gonna talk about it in a general sense, not specifically just to miniatures, because I think a lot of people misuse the word primer when what they mean is base coat sometimes. What is a primer? In painting, in house painting, for example, auto body painting, any kind of painting, your finish coat, your, your final paint, that paint often is a highly durable finish coat that is meant to be exposed to the world long term and hold up over time. Generally in painting, the trade-off for a durable coating is that it has a poor adhesion to many surfaces. So you need a primer. A primer is a type of paint that is specifically formulated to bond really, really well to a substrate. In house painting, your primer is designed to bond to drywall, or sometimes it will be designed to bond to a previously finished surface or a clear coat. There's all sorts of different primers that are meant to bond to different materials. Often aerosol primers are meant to bond to metal, and it doesn't just stick to the metal. It sometimes actually chemically changes this surface and etches into the material and acts like a paint Velcro. And once you have that prime bond layer, you can now apply higher quality, more durable paint that will stick well to the primer. It's this weird, this thing doesn't stick to this thing, so put this thing in the middle that sticks to this and this. Does that, I think that makes sense. So with miniatures, metal minis for example, you're gonna wanna prime them with a aerosol primer that bonds to metal. But when you're dealing with the cheaper plastic minis, that may not be your best option. With the WizKids pre-primed miniatures, in theory, you do not need to prime them because they already are primed. However, if you followed along in the previous episodes in the series, 
you may have completed a lot of prep work on your miniature, specifically removing mold lines and filling gaps, which now creates spots on the miniature that are no longer primed. So do you need to touch up that primer? Need to? No. It's just little spots. You can probably get away with just painting over them and you'll likely be okay but there is gonna be a risk that those areas won't have the paint stick to the miniature really well long-term, so it is a good idea to prime them. With the WizKids Minis, you can spray them with most aerosol primers that are designed to work on plastic. That'll work all right. What I like to do is actually use the Vallejo Surface Primer so that it's the same as the stuff that came with the Mini originally. This primer is designed for an airbrush, which I don't own. If you own an airbrush, airbrush it on. Awesome. If you don't, you can use it with a brush. It will work just fine. It's a really, really thin primer, so it flows really nicely and you don't need very much of it. All you need to do is brush some of it on and work it over the miniature, making sure that you don't have excess pooling in the mini. Let that nice and thoroughly dry, and then you are ready to move on to paint. What about Reaper Bones? This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. A lot of people get their Bones minis, they grab their spray paint primer, and they hit the mini. And they learn the hard way that many, many aerosol primers react very poorly with the plastic that is used for Bones miniatures. There is some sort of chemical reaction that creates a really sticky texture on the mini that doesn't want to go away. So if you just grab any rattle can spray primer and hit your bones, there's a very good chance that it won't cure properly and you will have a miniature that is forever sticky that you gotta deal with. There are some aerosol primers that people have had success with, but everybody's mileage kind of varies in this topic. So I prefer to just avoid aerosol primers in general on Reaper Bones and not take that risk. When I first started painting minis, painting Bones minis, I did some research as to how to prep them. And I came across a really informative post on the Reaper forums. And this post goes through a lot of different things you can use to prime your bones models. And it talks about the different aerosol primers that people have had a lot of success with and a lot of failures with. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to that post because it is worth a read. It's super informative. And there is the list of aerosol primers that a lot of people have tried that they seem to have success with, and you can test it out for yourself. But I think with any of them, there is a risk because different site conditions, humidity levels, all sorts of stuff can affect how they react. So it is best that if you're gonna try one of those, you test it on one single one first instead of painting a whole bunch of them. Me personally, I don't bother with the spray primers on bones. The bones plastic is designed to bond really well with acrylic paint. So that whole little spiel I had about what a primer is, that it's different than paint because it bonds better. With the Reaper Bones plastic, that material works with acrylic paint. Acrylic paint bonds really, really well to the plastic, which is a unusual scenario. Usually acrylic paint doesn't bond that well, but it does on the bones. You can use various acrylic paints to do a prime coat on your bones material. Now you might think, well, why do I need to do a coat on the bones material if the acrylic paint can work? Why don't I just start painting it with my various colors? One of the reasons for that is that while acrylic paint bonds really well to the bones plastic, it repels water. And when you're painting a miniature, it is good practice to thin your paint. You will get much better results if you thin your paint. However, the first coat that touches the bones plastic, if it's thinned with water, it will repel and it will not go on well. So you have to put on one undiluted, unthinned coat of acrylic paint to prime the bones material. And this is where people are probably starting to freak out in the comment section saying, how could you not thin your paint? You have to thin your paint. And it's true, thin your paint. You will get nicer details. A lot of coats of unthinned paint will muddy the detail, but one nice, thin, nicely applied layer of unthinned acrylic paint is not gonna lose you a bunch of detail. And if you don't believe me, check out that forum post that I mentioned earlier, because in it, there's a lot of comparisons showing just 
how well this works and that you don't actually lose a lot of detail if you're just doing that one coat. That being said, you wanna prime your bones material with some acrylic paint. You can use the Reaper Master Series acrylic paint, which is what I use to paint my minis, but if you're cheap, like I am often, you might not wanna use that nice expensive paint to do the base coat or prime coat of all your miniatures. So when dealing with Reaper bones, I prime them using basic generic acrylic craft paint. You can use the Craftsmart stuff, folk art, whatever. This is a widely used successful technique for priming bones material. Don't dilute it, put it on very thin, make sure you don't get any pooling in the crevices. Acrylic craft paint will bond really, really well to the bones material. It'll give you a nice matte surface in which your model paint will apply much better moving forward in the process and it really, really works. I don't think there's any other material that craft paint sticks to this well. It's pretty astounding actually. So I tend to prime my bones with acrylic craft paint. You, again, don't wanna dilute it. You want to put it on thin, no excess, and you wanna let it really dry before moving forward. What's nice about this is that because you can prime it with acrylic paint, that means you can prime it in any color of paint that you own. There's three common colors in which people tend to prime their miniatures. And if you're new, you might be confused as to when to use each color. Often you will see minis primed in either black, white, or gray. Black primer is nice because when you're painting, if you miss any spots, it just looks like a shadow in the crevice. You don't need to get the paint into every little low recess. The problem with black primer is that a lot of colors are really hard to cover with black. If you have a mini that's mostly really light colors, priming it black first is gonna force you to use tons and tons of layers to build up that color. Some colors are almost impossible to get good coverage over black. So for lighter colors, white is often much, much better. The problem with white is that, conversely, dark colors don't cover it very well because you always see on the high points that white peeking through. Gray is a great in-between, and it's usually my go-to color for primer. I just use a light gray for most purposes. But if I'm gonna be painting a miniature that is largely flesh-colored, and I mean European flesh-colored, a lighter, fairer flesh, I will often prime it with a pinkish tan, something that is similar to that. If you have a model that's almost entirely green, why not just prime it in green? This is standard practice using aerosol primers like Army Painter when people do batch painting. But the nice thing is that on the bones material, because you can use acrylic paint, you can use your whole library of acrylic paint to prime. But when in doubt, go with gray. Gray is going to work for most purposes. Of course, experiment. The more you do, the more you paint, the more you'll start to inherently know which color primer is most appropriate for your model. Once your model is primed, you are ready to paint. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and drop me a comment below. If you want to pick up any tools and supplies that I use in my builds, head on over to blackmagiccraft .ca. There you'll find my essential equipment store where I link to all of the stuff that I use regularly. Those purchases help fund this channel through a small commission through Amazon. I'm also gonna put a link in the video description to the Vallejo surface primer that I use on my WizKids models so that you can pick up some of that if you want. For the bones, I mean, just use your regular craft paint, go to Walmart, go to Michaels, wherever. Don't need to buy anything fancy for that. If you found this video useful, you can thank the generous people who support Black Magic Craft on Patreon for funding this channel and helping me to bring these videos to you and the community. It is through that support that I am able to offset the costs and the time involved in making these videos. So if you want to help out the channel in a big way and get involved in the Patreon fellowship community, check out my Patreon page. I would love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. If this is your first time at the channel, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. I got a whole bunch of cool videos to help you in your tabletop terrain building and miniature hobby. And on that note, it's time to say goodbye, cheers, and happy crafting. <laughs>